Hey guys, it's Denise Nola Collectibles and welcome to my channel. I'm here today to a, to do a thrift store haul. Um, you guys know I go to a couple of thrift stores in my area and I go jewelry shopping and they have great deals on vintage jewelry, contemporary jewelry, all kinds of good stuff. So I hit my thrift store, I picked up a whole bunch of really fun items and I want to share it with you. And so I'm going to get right into it. Um, and I will give you my spiel as we get into it. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Denise Nola Collectibles. I am a part-time reseller. I sell primarily on eBay. My eBay name there is also, my store name is Nola Collectibles. And I do thrift store hauls, thread up unboxings, Goodwill unboxings, Goodwill blue box unboxings, shop Goodwill unboxings, all that good stuff, estate sale hauls, thrift store, thrift store hauls, all related to jewelry. And so, yeah, like I said, I'm gonna get right into it. If you're into jewelry, then I'm hoping that this is the channel for, for vous. Um, this is the first item that I picked up. I was really, really excited about and You all know I have a soft spot for Native American jewelry. And this guy, big, large, you know, pretty substantial. It's got faux opals in there. Um, just gorgeous. The settings was really, really lovely. This was marked $5.99. It is signed on the back. It's signed. It is signed. Denny. Denny and it's Denny Sterling and so yeah I just was so tickled that I found this um because it just looks so gorgeous I I mean look at the just this makes a statement really really great and just such a bargain price I, I was just this was the type of piece like, where I was driving away from the thrift store and I was like opening my bag and looking at it <laughs> and putting on the item as it was at a stop sign because I'm like this is so gorgeous yeah so I was really really excited about that piece of jewelry really just a gorgeous ring right there beautiful piece of Native American jewelry so I picked up that guy um from there I am going to go where to go where to go I'm gonna stick I'll stick with the Native American theme I picked up these really fun kind of um concho style stamped sterling silver concho style earrings right here and they have some really pretty coral detail there you can see there's a little coral cabochon right in the center and we have little um, bits of coral on the leaves the dangling part of the leaves I thought these were just so super cute these were marked also $5.99 and so I definitely picked up those as well I mean where are you going to find if you guys have been to New Mexico if you've been to places like Santa Fe and Albuquerque this jewelry is really expensive. Like if you go shopping, you know, for it, and even if you hit the pawn shops, like it's pretty damn expensive, you know? So if you can kind of like indulge your, <laughs> your, you know, your hobby in a way that's a little bit less expensive, then why not? Why not, I say? So where to go from there? So we have the two pieces of a kind of like Native American jewelry here. Really quick, what I've got going on, um, I'm kind of in that same vibe. Uh, I did a thread up unboxing recently. I think um, it was from Sewanee, Georgia, and I had a Silpata ring, and it's this little multi gemstone Silpata ring here. It was really, really cute. I cleaned it up. It looks great. And then um, you'll see where I'm going with the with the Native American. I recently purchased a thrift store jewelry bag, and I found this gorgeous sterling silver and copper cuff bracelet, and it has the Heartline bears on it. And some, this is also stamped silver, the arrow and a lightning bolt. And it's just so cool. I got that out of a thrift store jewelry bag. And then I also got this double kind of lion's head, you know, um, double lion's head silver tone. This is not sterling silver or anything like that. It is costume, but I love the look of it so much and it's so easy to wear. And so I think it was just a great little addition there too to stack. And so all of these items, they are available in my shop, no collectibles on eBay but I catch and release. I'm enjoying them. <laughs> I'm enjoying them while I can. <laughs> so I picked up this little dude. He just looked very interesting to me. I think he's a little quail. If not, you tell me. He has a very pointy beak. I don't know. Does the pointy beak make him waterfowl? Does that mean he hunts for shrimp and little fishes? I don't know. You all tell me if you think this is not a quail, if you think this is something else. Um, again, I don't know. This was not something I see every single day. It just looked kind of like 
this reminds me of like, you know, old English, like hunting jewelry, like that someone would be wearing on their lapel as they pull out their binoculars with their plaid and they go hunting for, for, for quail. I have no idea. I don't know. That's in my mind. This is what I correlate with this piece. <laughs> Um, I just thought he was like a really cool little dude. And so for $3.99, I picked up that guy as well. I love that little sterling silver dude. And uh, where should I go? I'll go to a modern piece. You know me. I like to sometimes pick up Stella and Dot. Stella and Dot does tend to sell, continue to sell well for me. And I found this kind of little um, gold tone and rhinestone necklace here. It's kind of got champagne rhinestones. Really beautiful. I actually thought this was J. Crew when I first first saw it. You know the style that J. Crew does, the brulee style, which actually it's very similar to this. It has a very similar setting. I'm not saying that this is brulee. I'm saying it is similar. If you Google that J. Crew brulee necklace, you will see what I'm talking about. They tend to sell for, sell for quite a bit of money, but this is a Stella and Dot. And I just like the look of it. I think this is a great little, you know, everyday necklace. Great for the office. Great to jazz up your outfit. And so for $3.99, I picked up that Stella and Dot necklace. I like that a whole lot. Here, um, this is like an oldie here. And this is definitely, this one was definitely half price. It was marked for $5.99. So I paid $3 on these. And these are the brand, uh, they're glass. You can see they're very, very old, and they are a brand called Vogue. They are marked um, right there on the back of the post. See that there? And Vogue is a brand that, uh, in terms of costume jewelry, they actually started in New York City in 1936. So it is actually a very old brand. I've sold a few pieces of Vogue jewelry. They've, they manufactured very large, substantial items in sterling silver during World War II. And I've sold some of those. I mean, like huge uh, with paste rhinestones and whatnot. Uh, so I saw this and like this to me does look very Art Deco. And I'm thinking about the setting of it. Let me see if I take one off. Take these guys off for you. It's the setting and the combination of the glass here that is making me believe that this is Art Deco. And like I said, while the brand of Vogue was founded in 1936, I believe they were manufacturing until the early 70s. So it was around for quite a bit of time. There we go. And this is what those guys look like. And I, I'm just talking about really, like I said, the, the, the prong setting here to me is very reminiscent of Art Deco style. And uh, like you said, the glass is just absolutely beautiful. It's almost like a blue clouded sky. Just really gorgeous. Almost reminds me of like a Peking glass, uh, but in blue. So I picked up those guys for $3. Like I said, very, very old pair of earrings right there. And I think I thought that they needed to be rescued from the thrift store. So I rescued them. Um, it's always a good excuse, right? I'm going to go over here. Let's stick with some older, older brands. Why not? Um, and this is a, a Weiss strawberry brooch. And I just thought this was so adorable. We have the Japan look to this brooch where it has the black kind of layered matte finish to it as opposed to being on like a gold tone or a silver tone metal and we just have a pave of red rhinestones there just just looks like it makes it look so juicy to me like <laughs> does it get any more sparkly than this a pave of rhinestones so the red and the green I, I just thought this was super super sweet it looks like this on the back and this guy I believe this one was also half price for two dollars no one wanted this little Weiss strawberry brooch, and so I rescued him from the thrift store. Welcome to my home, little dude. If only for a limited time. Um, what else? I picked up, you guys know I do have a soft spot for Sarah, uh, Sarah Coventry jewelry. Uh, I have a pretty extensive collection of Sarah Coventry jewelry. Sarah Coventry, a brand that was like similar to like an Avon model where it was peer-to-peer -peer selling, you know, the hostess would have a party, she would invite her friends over and she would sell to her friends and family. And you would get the catalogs, you'd select your items from the catalogs. And um, it, it did make, they did actually make very high quality jewelry. 
Uh, they had a proprietary process for gold plating that they they specifically owned. And so it, it, it lends itself as to why all these years later, Sarah Coventry jewelry still looks so good. It still holds up. So it was out of Newark, New York. Don't know where Newark, New York is, know where Newark, New Jersey is, but it was based originally in Newark, New York. Uh, so this is part of their Sul Sultana collection. I have the pendant the matching pendant for this. So I just wanted to kind of get myself a complete set here and I saw this, this was on sale, so it was $2.50. And so I picked up the matching earrings and I believe, I'm not 100% sure here because I haven't referenced it, I need to look. I believe that Sultana first was introduced in the late 60s and was available through the early 70s. Um, so yeah, just a really pretty pair of Sarah Coventry rhinestone earrings in excellent condition to match my pendant necklace, which I actually love. I wear all the time. Pull this off the card so I can show you guys what they look like. Like that. And if you are interested more in Sarah Coventry jewelry, some people dismiss Sarah Coventry uh, because it was, you know, what would be considered like a mass produced brand. Um, I don't think Sarah Coventry was as mass produced as say like an Avon. Avon to me is something that was really, really, really mass produced. And that's why we see so much of it on the market and it tends not to have as much value. Uh, similarly, I will say though, Sarah Coventry right now is experiencing a soft market, meaning the prices on resale of these items are not as high as they were maybe like 15 years ago. You know, but the market ebbs and flows. So it means that's a good time for collectors. So if you want to invest in some Sarah Coventry jewelry, now is definitely a good time to do so. And if you're interested in like learning more, there's a fabulous, fabulous Sarah Coventry and Eamons Facebook group. And Eamons and Sarah Coventry, same brand. So if you encounter Eamons, it is in fact manufactured in the same facility as Sarah Coventry. They share some similar styles. Um, there's a great Facebook group. So just called Sarah Coventry and Eamons and they have all of the catalogs scanned starting with like 1965. It's amazing, an amazing resource. So if you want to, you know, you come across the Sarah Coventry piece, you wanna know the name specifically, like I'm okay, that's Sultana. You can go onto this group, request, you know, to be um, request membership and they'll allow you in. You'll have access to all those catalogs and you can see what all the jewelry is named. Anyway, I digress. Anyway, so this is a really pretty, this one is Listener and this guy was, how much was this? $3.99 and just a really, really large thermoset plastic brooch here and also, <laughs> also close to my heart, I love Moon Glow. Don't ask me why. It just is, maybe it's partially the name, maybe it's, you know, the kind of two-tone aspect of Moon Glow. I just, I just love it. I love it so much. And so I think this is really cute. I enjoyed kind of the fall foliage vibes it's given me. I love, you know, those like aut aut autumnal colors, the oranges and the reds and the yellows and the gold all together. Really nice sizable brooch. And like I said, for $3.99, I said, yes to the dress or to the brooch in this case. Um, <laughs> what else? Uh, let's stick with some of these oldie dudes. Um, this guy though, this is a Kramer. This is a Kramer brooch right here. And I just thought this one was super cool. I like that it had this movable tassel component. I don't know, just the fluidity of that to me combined with a unique design that was almost um, giving me kind of Asian inspired, you know, a look to it. Like it's looking to me almost like bamboo. I don't know there, maybe it's a little bit of the cutting that's in, in the brushed silver look here, but I thought this was a very unique piece. This guy, $4.99 and uh, yeah, I don't know. I, this is uh, not, not something I come across every day. I haven't had a chance to research it. So I'm not a hundred percent sure on what the value of it, but it was just like one of those pieces that speak to me. You know me, it's, I purchase sometimes by what I like, what my gut tells me, and you know, sparkly is it, you know, sparkly stuff just gets me every time. I'm like a magpie. So yeah, added that guy to the collection, also saved, saved from the thrift store. 
Um, I also got this guy right here. This one was marked $5.99, and this is just a, a more contemporary sterling silver, sterling silver bangle with a bezel set uh, cubic zirconia. And I just thought this was a really nice substantial piece. This one was actually on the shelf. So I tell you guys, sometimes the jewelry is behind a counter and sometimes it's on the shelf. So I have had very good luck with the jewelry on the shelf. They tend to overlook things. I don't know why I have found David Yerman there. So like legitimate David Yerman. And so I found this, it is signed and it says um, CC925. DDCZ, CZ, which I can assume to be a uh, cubic zirconia. And yeah, I just thought that was a really nice kind of slick looking bracelet. And so I will clean this guy up and um, I think it'll be a great little piece to add to the shop. So I have that one right there. You guys, uh, another Facebook group, I'm always talking about these Facebook groups, but listen, face, Facebook has become an excellent resource for resellers. Whatever you are interested in, you can find a group for it and they can help you identify your stuff. So whether it be Murano, Italian glass, or California pottery, whatever you are into, whatever you might find, there is a group for it. European pottery, American studio pottery, um, Native American jewelry, you name it, it's out there. And so <laughs> and you can easily learn more. So I'm all about it. Like I said, I think it's a great free resource uh, for resellers and just for people who are enthusiasts who like to collect glass, Blanco glass, genie bottles, whatever, whatever you're into. <laughs> I belong to several of them and I encourage people to, you know, to explore it too. It's a, you know, it's just more knowledge share and, you know, knowledge is if we can share what we all know, then I think we just make each other, we like kind of empower everybody else, you know, we like give each other that knowledge. Um, so not much better than that. Anyway talking too much you guys I'm gonna have to turn it down a little bit okay so for $5.99 I picked up these sterling silver and gray pearl earrings and I just thought these they seemed very heavy and very well made these guys are looking like this you can see here very large sizable pearl they are pearls I did test them and really nice gray natural gray color to them and I don't know like they they just, like I said, they seem to be very well made. What does it say? Let's see what it says on the back. I have my list. Um, so we have NF925 and there is another mark there. Let me see if I can take these guys off and show you. Okay. Yeah, they're just very dramatic. They're very nice. And so these guys, let's do one. These guys look like this. Very nice size kind of diameter to that pearl. Um, this is a pearl, but I think it is going to make a statement. I'm gonna say that this is like about a 10 millimeter pearl, size pearl, pretty large. So those I really liked a whole lot. Those cost me, what did I say, $5.99. And I think with a little bit of a cleanup, those will be absolutely fabulous. Um, you know, with this, you know, the topic of clean and silver, some people really like a patina. They like age and they like to see that aged wear on their jewelry. I think that's especially true for Native American pieces. Some people like very, very clean jewelry. So it's just really based on per, uh, personal preference. For me as a seller, I I'm not going to put something into my shop that's like black you know, to the point where it almost looks damaged. I will clean it up. Um, I do enjoy cleaning silver. I'm a weirdo like that. So <laughs> I have, you know, I'll sit down with the polishing cloth and uh, I like to restore a natural luster or beauty to a piece of silver. Um, this little dude was in the counter and he was hanging out all on his lonesome. I don't think anyone saw him. I mean, cause he's pretty small, but you can see here, it's like a little sterling silver piece and it's got these little, um, teeny tiny what well, could be cubic cubic zirconia but um what caught my eye really here and are coming in super close uh are the colored stones there and those to me did look like possibly colored garnets and so different shades of garnets garnets come in different colors based um you know just not only um the type of garnet that they are but the region where they come from 
Uh, so you'll see garnets that are more purple in color. You'll see garnets that are more cherry in color. Um, so yeah, just depending on bohemian garnet, garnets um, on that, it will impact kind of the color. But I, I believe this was like a Judith Jack piece. Judith Jack, a New York based designer. She actually specialized in um, Marxite jewelry and the recreation of Victorian types and styles of jewelry. So um, this is a little bit not typical, oops, typical Judith Jack, but uh, not completely out of left field either. So that dude I picked up, I think that was, a, it was on, definitely on sale at $3. Like I said, it was like underneath all this other jewelry. No one saw it. I saw it <laughs> and I, I, I picked up that guy. What else? I got these very cool kind of artisan, artisan um, brass earrings right here. And they kind of have this like wavy design to them. This one a little bit, this was $3.99. They are signed on the back. And so, I don't know, they were kind of giving me like a, a Santa, Fe, Santa Fe artisan kind of feeling. Um, and if you've been to Santa Fe, you know what I'm talking about. The, this is exactly the type of thing you would find in one of the shops there. Let's see, I see if I can show you. They are definitely artisan made because I can kind of, I can see the soldering on the back. And there's also the, the artist signature right there. So you can see that as well. So a little bit out of left field for me, but I don't know, there's something about them that caught my eye and I like them. And so, you know, the price was right. So I picked up those guys as well. So I'll put them right there. And I'm trying to figure out where to go from here. I'll go right here. I have this, um, this dude was 100% half price and it was originally marked for $24.99, which I think is very high for the thrift store. Um, but it is a faceted um, hematite. And I like the fact that it's just this very kind of elongated marquee cut stone. I always enjoy a marquee cut because they elongate your hand, <laughs> supposedly, <laughs> right? Well, you, I mean, you know, you can see why this theory holds true. It's a longer cut. You see how it extends down the finger. And so it does kind of like give you a little bit of added extra length that could go in a, a lot of different ways. Um, <laughs> we're talking about jewelry here, folks. Get your minds out of the gutter. Um, I don't know. I just thought it was very pretty. It's sterling silver. I do believe it's, it is marked here. Let me see here real quick. Um, it says sterling and then it just says shank and I think it, and there's a V in there. I know the brand. It's not coming straight to my to my mind right now. But um, yeah, just a fun, I think, great little like mid-century piece of jewelry right there. So I picked up that. I'll put that right here. Let's focus up. And where to go next? Where to go next? Uh, uh, similarly, this little sterling silver ring right here, and this one is sterling silver and marcasite. Again, I think just a pretty design. This one, definitely half price. I did not pay $15 for it, so I probably paid the $7.50 for it, and nice little marcasite ring. This one marked. So this has BN, has a 925, and I will try this on for you as well. Overall, just very pretty. So I, I like that. I don't tend to gravitate too much towards Marcusite jewelry because, you know, it was something that was uh, definitely a revival, you know, in the late 80s. It came back pretty strong. Uh, and it was a lot of manufacturing coming out of Asia where the stones were glued. And so <laughs> I've heard many horror story of people trying to clean their Marcusite jewelry from the 80s and the 90s. And they would bring it to the jeweler and they would steam it and all the Marcusites would fall out. So, because they were all glued in, but older Marcusite jewelry will have, the Marcusites will have prongs, little mini prongs on them. But uh, this one, not not prong, not a prong set Marcusite, but definitely pretty, I thought. And so I definitely, I did pick that one up. So we'll put that next to our quail friend. More Marcusite jewelry. I picked up these guys right here. These were really pretty earring and sterling silver with the marcasite detail on the top and bottom little bit of onyx and mother of pearl and i thought those were really quite lovely and again very kind of different looking focus different looking 
Um, you know, you know what these reminded me of? I'm not Jewish. For some reason, the Torah, you know, the casing that they put the Torah in. I don't know why it reminds me of that. I don't know. If you guys correct me, but <laughs> like I had, you know, I had a, I've had a lot of Jewish friends growing up. So I've been to quite a bit of weddings and bat mitzvahs and benign mitzvahs and bar mitzvahs. <laughs> so <laughs> it did kind of like remind me of that. But regardless, I think they're very cute earrings and very nicely made. And so I definitely, I picked those guys up as well. And I'm fairly certain that these were half price. So $5 on those. And let's see. I, you guys know I also have a soft spot for Italian jewelry, Italian made jewelry. I love Italian glass, Murano glass, Murano glass beads, all of the above. And so here is just a really beautiful and very simple middle fiori glass pendant. This dude half price, so for three dollars, I had to pick up this little like gorgeous little middle fiori. These guys typically are gold filled pieces, so if you encounter them out in the wild it is not unusual for them to be gold filled but you will also find 14 karat and 10 karat versions of this as well so it just really depends on you know where the person purchased it how much they were willing to invest but I, I i did find you know i do find quite a bit of them that are gold filled and i, I, do, I do enjoy them still i think they're very very pretty lovely little artisan pieces um italian glass masters of glass making Venetian glass. So again, I'm a sucker for old world techniques and I love to continue to see that. So I do pick up those pieces whenever I do come across them, similar to how I pick up the necklaces. Also these guys right here, just like a really pretty abalone shell and sterling silver pair of earrings here. I thought these were very nicely made. I like the setting that these were in, kind of this like trapezoid, you know, these also have marker sides. Let me see, I'm gonna take these off real quick. They're nice and heavy, sterling silver. They are signed on the back. I just sold a really beautiful abalone necklace to someone on eBay recently. It was a really quite stunning necklace. And it had a very modern, modern clasp to it like a really beautiful sterling silver modern clasp so it was like that knotted hand knotted abalone and then with the sterling silver clasp this very unique and modernist looking clasp and one thing with abalone if you're selling like shells sometimes abalone is kind of reconstituted meaning they'll take pieces and put it together but real abalone should all be one piece like a continuous piece and you should be able to see pattern on the front and the continue on the front and to the back of it. So like I said, if you're someone who might be into beading, you're buying abalone discs, for example, to make a necklace, that's how you can kind of tell if it's a reconstituted abalone or if it's actual like beautiful whole abalone shell. And that's what buyers are looking for. So these guys were $7.99, half price, so I paid $4 for them. And then they're just, like I said, sterling silver, very pretty. I love those. Those are very nice. I think those, they're nice studs. They're a decent size. They're probably very comfortable to wear. And so, yeah, I picked up those too. I'm going to do a couple more pieces here, guys, since we're kind of coming to the half hour mark. And I don't want to monopolize your time, even though I could look at jewelry and talk jewelry all day long. Uh, this one, this is kind of like one of those pieces, not really a whole lot of value here. This is by a brand called Star. I love the back of this necklace. I just think this, you know, is, is kind of, you know, it's definitely from the 70s. It's like kind of that Asian inspired look that was so dominant during the time. And we have here this kind of, I forget what, I don't know. Yeah, it is stone. It is cold. I forget what this is. I don't know if this is natural. I definitely, I looked it up, I found it. And I, right now I'm just like not recalling off the top of my head, but I don't know. I just thought this was a good looking piece. Like I said, I love the back. I almost love the back more than I love the front. This is pretty like a frame, just a great piece to wear, to throw on anything. Great layering piece, fantastic for jazzing up any outfit. 
And then I'll do this one right here, guys, and then I'm gonna wrap it up. I got this little bangle right here. This was more $2.99. I think this too was half price, so a buck fifty. You know, I don't know. I was like, mm, is this Brighton or is this legitimate tortoise? Not 100% sure because I literally just picked it up. I will need to do further investigation, but regardless of what it might be, I thought it was very chic. Put it on. And We'll see how it looks amongst the stack. I like the silver accents on it. So, you know, it's, you see there it has like kind of like a, a couple of like little stations there throughout the bangle. I like that aspect of it. So, and, and it was cheap. So I definitely added that guy to my pile. It was a no brainer for me. I don't know, could be nothing, could be something. Need to investigate and research further. But yeah, that's it, you guys. That's um my very large, a very large thrift store haul for today and I hope you enjoyed it I enjoyed sharing it with you let me know your thoughts let me know what you think um correct me if I've incorrectly you know stated anything here today I know we the knowledge highway goes both ways folks it's not a one-way street so yeah thanks for tuning in you guys um I hope you have a great weekend I appreciate you being here Give me the like on the way out. Give me the thumbs up. It helps my channel grow. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you next week. Appreciate you being here, guys. Have a good one. Bye.